fighting men. They have full three score thousand. That's five to one. Besides, they're all fresh. Oh, these are fearsome odds. Oh, if we had here but one ten thousand of those men in England who do no work today. What's he that wishes so? My cousin Westward? Ah, my fair cousin. If we are marked to die, we are enough to do our country loss. And if to live, the fewer men, the greatest share of honor. God's will, I pray thee, wish not one man more. Brother, proclaim it, Westland, to my host, that he which has no stomach to this fight, let him depart. His passport shall be made and grounds for convoy put into his purse. We would not die in that man's company that fears his fellowship to die with us. This day is known as the Feast of Crispian. He who sees this day and comes safe home shall stand at tiptoe when this day is named and arouse him at the name of Crispian. He who sees this day and lives old age shall yearly on the vigil feast his neighbors and say for morrow is Saint Crispian. Then will he strip his sleeve and show his scars and say, These wounds I had on Crispin's day. Old men forget, but all shall be forgot, but he'll remember with advantages what feats he did that day. Oh, and then shall our names, familiar in their mouths as household words, Harry the King, Bedford and Exeter, Warwick and Tolbert, Salisbury and Gloucester, be it in their flowing cups, freshly remembered. This story shall an old man teach his son, and Crispin Crispian shall ne'er go by from this day to the ending of the world, but we in it shall be remembered. We few, we happy few, we band of brothers, for he today that sheds his blood with me shall be my brother. Be he ne'er so vile, this day shall gentle his condition. And gentlemen in England now abed shall think themselves accursed they were not here. And all their manhoods chink, whilst any speaks that fought with us upon St. Crispin's day.